This time on Jairus of All, I build a chainsaw dog. The heck is a chainsaw dog? Is that right? Pachita is the name of the chainsaw dog character from the show and book series called Chainsaw Man. Probably the coolest chainsaw ever, and I want one, so I'm gonna make him. This could be a really easy project because I could take one of those little electric chainsaws and very easily put that in the middle of a 3D print. But I obsess over the accuracy of these projects, and in the source material, he has a pull cord and makes engine sounds, so he's gotta have a two-stroke gas engine. But that makes it a lot more difficult because Pachita is a small dog, and gas chainsaws have their barn chain mounted on the side, which means it'd have to be offset to come out the middle of his face, which means it's gonna stick out of the side of the dog, or the dog has to be extra wide to contain it, which looks ridiculous. Luckily, I have a plan for a very small inline chainsaw. A couple years ago, I picked up a whole pile of junk string trimmers for 20 bucks. I was gonna use them for a different project that I never did. Now, I need to see if I can get any of these things to even run. First things first, spark. Doesn't look bad. Spark? Yep, we have a spark. So we have spark, we have compression because I can feel it. So what we probably don't have is fuel because the primer ball doesn't seem to be working correctly, which means the carburetor's probably clogged, which is not surprising because this has been sitting for two years. Maybe I'm supposed to hold the throttle on. I don't know. Oh ho, look at that. But that motor didn't have a clutch. I thought it did because the front of it stuck out so much, but it doesn't, and I need one because chainsaws need a centrifugal clutch because otherwise that very dangerous chainsaw is directly connected to the motor, which means even when you're pulling the cord, that thing's spinning. Now I need to rip all the rest of the trimmers open to see if any of them do have a clutch. Yep, there we go. I bet turning this thing on without the shaft on there would be dangerous. <laughs> to say the least. <laughs> no clutch. <laughs> this one's a better size and it puts the pull start back here so it's, it'd be very easy to get this back for his tail because his tail's the pull start. And it feels like it's got good compression. This one's a really good size for it also. It looks like it might be the same exact motor. Pull starts in the same place. It feels like it has good compression also. There's almost no chance either of these have clutches in them. It's just too small, but I won't know until I pull it apart to find out. And no clutch. Direct drive. Yeah. Yeah. Do I have to take the top cover off first? I do. Yeah. Clutch! Clutch, 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 clutch. We got a clutch. The question now is, can I get this one to run? Well, it's got compression, because I can feel it when I'm pulling on the cord, and it's got spark, check that. So it's gotta be fuel that's the issue. Well, the carburetor looks pretty clean, but it's not pulling any gas from the tank, so maybe if I can just get this thing to fire up a little bit by squirting some gas right into the motor, I can get it to go. We're getting gas coming into the carburetor now, too. It's pulling it up. We are functioning. One more time. Oh, ho, ho, ho. <laughs> Chokes off. No choke. <laughs> Guess who's got two thumbs and is about to have a gas powered chainsaw dog. It runs, but I'm still missing a very critical part. I don't have the actual chainsaw, but there are pull saw attachments that are a gearbox with a chainsaw bar and chain attached to it. And that will give me my inline chainsaw. So I got one from Amazon and I thought everything would be standard connections, but it's not because my poles don't fit and my drive shaft doesn't work. I have a 10 spline, much smaller drive shaft, and this takes seven spline. I use some scrap aluminum to make the pole bigger so that the pole saw attachment can actually clamp down on the pole. And then I cut the drive shaft to length, machined it square for the part that engages with the motor. And then I use solid core copper wire as basically key stock to make my small 10 spline shaft engage with the seven spline receptacle. So then I put everything together, locked the tubes in place with machine screws and gave it a shot. Okay. <laughs> <Yeah>! <laughs> Sweet success. <laughs>
Pachita's heart and soul is complete. Now it's time to put a body on it. To find the size that I need to build the frame to make Pachita's body, I referenced the source material and found that his size varies depending on the situation or scene. But I took the average of that and I got a size that I hope will fit my inline chainsaw rig. I drew out a template first for the profile of Pachita's body. I used that, laid on top of a piece of wood, to drive in some nails and hold the steel rod in place while I bent it around to his shape. Once I pulled it out of the nails, it sprung out of shape a little bit, but I banged on it until it was accurate. And then I made two of those. And they need to be connected with screw together tabs so that once this frame is finished, I can get all the stuff inside of it. And then I used a ring roller to get the rods bent into perfect circles because Pachita is shaped like a potato and he's just round. And then I got a free model online and 3D printed the legs from it. And I just super glued those in place on the frame so that I was able to build a steel reinforcing structure on the inside of the legs because I don't trust easily shatterable PLA to support the weight that's gonna be inside this. I'm super excited about this project now because this is turning out so cool. It already is obviously Pachita, but this also made me aware of a major problem. This is the bar and chain from the pull saw attachment that I was using. And when you hold this up to Pachita's frame, it is way too small because Pachita is kind of a thick boy and he's got a big old thick boy bar and chain sticking out of his face, not this little tiny thing. And with this being so accurate, there's no way I can settle for that. So I gave Pachita a huge upgrade. I hoped it would be pretty straightforward to get a bar and chain that would match Pachita's size accurately, but it took a really long time to find the stuff, and even when I did find a bar that was wide enough to match, it required extensive modification to get it to work with the pull saw head on my setup. Even though this upgrade added days of work to this project, it was completely worth it, because now Pachita will have an accurately sized chainsaw bar sticking out of his face that matches the source material. Unfortunately, right after I fixed this, I ran into the second major problem. When I put Pachita's rig inside of his body, it sits like this to come out of his face at the right spot. And the problem is that makes his chainsaw bar stick up in the air and Pachita's chainsaw bar comes straight out of his face in line with his spine. But if I do that with this, it makes the motor stick out of his body, which negates the entire purpose of making this inline setup. But luckily for this major problem, there is a simple solution. I can turn the engine upside down because two strokes are able to run in any orientation, but then this stuff is sticking up. But this black plastic part is just there to protect the gas tank, so it can go away. And then the gas tank can just get relocated to down here. And now there's nothing in the way. And now Pachita's bar sticks straight out of his face, just like it's supposed to, which means I can mount this whole setup into the frame. I hung the chainsaw rig in the position that I wanted inside of the frame using safety wire. I had bolted small steel tabs onto all of the hard points on the motor, and I welded those to the frame using small steel rods. And that triangulated the position of the chainsaw rig inside of the frame so that it cannot shift around at all. With the engine in this position, the exhaust is basically going to melt a hole through what would be his left butt cheek. So I lobster backed a pipe together that reroutes the exhaust down to his belly and comes out hidden between his rear legs. There's no way that I could reach the choke on the carburetor, so I had to extend that also. And I used some safety wire, a heim joint, and threaded rod to extend it out of the bottom of him hidden between his rear legs also. Vegeta's pull start is his tail, which makes this part of the build surprisingly difficult because I had to restring the pull start with black cord and fabricate a steel handle and paint it black so that everything would match. That had to go through a 3D printed tail nubbin that I reinforced with copper pipe on the inside and then epoxied in attachment points for springs and guide wires so that it sits on the body where it's supposed to. But if I pull the pull cord at the wrong angle, it won't snap the tail off and I can still start Pachita. And with that done, onto the handles and the controls. Pachita's top handle is five degrees off from being square, which meant that I had to cut up a whole bunch of pieces of pipe and weld them into an accurate shape. But it wasn't the right thickness, so I bulked it out with some foam before covering it with a giant piece of two inch heat shrink tubing. That made the handle accurate in thickness and finish. The cheetah is set up so that I can work on anything inside of him, but I need to split the frame in half to do that. And since the front handle goes around both sides of the frame, it had to unbolt. So I whipped up some little connection points and triangulated that with steel rod, just like I did the chainsaw rig. The rear handle is more difficult than the front because it is where I want the throttle lever to be because that's where it is on a real chainsaw. But that means this handle needs an internal frame and pieces that can be removed so that if it ever breaks in the future, I'm able to do surgery and fix Pachita. 
without just cutting off the whole rear handle and having to make another one. Because the motor was all flipped around, I didn't have a throttle cable long enough to get to the carburetor, so I had to make a little rig to get that to work. And I put the kill switch from the string trimmer on right in front of the throttle so that I can turn them off very easily. Mechanically, the cheat is done and he's ready to rock and roll. But he's obviously not finished. He doesn't even have fur, much less the other special features that I'm gonna add to this build. And because we're focusing on having a consistent upload schedule this year, there's no way I can get all of that done for this video. So I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.